What is going on, my friends? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex from ironfidel.com. You asked for it, you got another video in the home invasion series. So I can't thank you guys enough for leaving comments in the last video. I asked you, what topics do you want me to cover? And then there was just a ton of comments down below, but there was one in particular that stuck out in my mind because it was a tough question for me to answer. And if it's a tough question for me to answer, then it's going to be a tough question for most of you guys to answer, which is why I think it's so important we talk about it. And that question was, what do you do if there's a law enforcement officer or somebody who's impersonating a law enforcement officer pounding on your door, identifying themselves as such and demanding entry into your home or worse yet, they've kicked in your door and then they're calling out, identifying themselves as law enforcement. What do you do in that situation? And I've had that very same thought, like I said before, and that's me as somebody who's been the one, the beat cop pounding on the door, demanding entry, been the one kicking in that door as a SWAT team member and making that announcement. So if that is me asking that question, we're all asking that question, but I have to be very, very careful about how I respond to this question, how I frame things, because if you misinterpret it or you don't quite understand what I'm saying, it could potentially put cops' lives in danger, which I obviously don't wanna do that. And I definitely don't wanna put your guys' lives in danger by you misinterpreting what I'm saying. So you have to be very careful with things like this. And also you need to familiarize yourself with your state and local laws, as well as the common procedures of your local police and just law enforcement departments in general. But given that every state, every city, every county, every police department, every home, every situation is different, I think it's important that we paint this with more just a, a broad brush. And I'll kind of give you the perspective of a law enforcement officer, common police practices when they are at your door versus common criminals practices and some things you might notice if it is actually an impersonator. And there's really two different situations here. The first one is the impersonator or the police officer is at your door. They have not made entry. They're pounding on your door. Please let me in the house. Please let me in the house. They're trying to convince you to open that door, whether it's the police or if they're an impersonator, they're trying to convince you to open the door so they can boot it in on you and then make entry and there's a home invasion in progress. And then the second situation is they've made entry into your home without you even knowing it and they're calling out saying, hey, police, police, and I know that's probably the more interesting topic, the second one, but as I was formulating my thoughts, there's just too much information for me to make this and cover this in one video. I'd have to skip over too many details and I think it's important that we cover these in detail. So we're separating it into two videos. This one's gonna be, they're at your door. They have not made entry into your home. And it's important we hit this one first because it's kind of laying the foundation in the groundwork leading up to that next one where they have made entry into your home. And that's the one you really wanna hear about. But this one is, equally as important. And this doesn't happen all that often. I know people probably think this happens all the time. It does happen. There are documented cases where this has happened in the United States, but it's not all that common. But even one instance is too many and it means it's worth the discussion. But the reality is most people feel really just uneasy around cops, uneasy around authority figures. Hell, even I do. If a cop pulls me over or they're knocking at my door, I'm a little bit anxious. I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but most people feel that way. And most people will feel the desire to comply, the desire to rationalize because you don't want to face the perceived consequence, consequences. But guess what? Criminals recognize that. They know that about you. And they try to seize upon that, seize upon your desire to comply. But you need to understand that most of the time a police officer shows up at your door, they have no reason and they have no legal authority to make entry into your home. So you should have plenty of time to slow things down and ask yourself three questions. Number one, why? are the police at your door. They have any reason whatsoever to be at your door. If it's 11 p.m. you're blaring music, then yeah, they have a reason to be there. They're probably there to tell you to turn the music down. But let's say you're sitting there with your family, eating dinner with your kids, you're not being loud, and the cops now have no reason to be there. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not actually cops at your door, but it should just heighten your awareness just a little bit when you're looking at the totality of the circumstances. And the second one is, is their appearance consistent with what you would expect of a police officer? Most of the time a cop shows up at your door, it's going to be a beat cop, somebody who's wearing a full uniform. Beat cops wear full uniforms, not somebody who's wearing a chain around their neck with a badge, you know, a black vest and then jeans. That doesn't mean that they're not police officers, but most of the time it's going to be that beat cop in a uniform. And you need to understand it's not difficult to buy a black vest, a badge and jeans off of Amazon. Pretty much anybody can do it. It doesn't mean that cops don't show up at your door like that, but one more thing to consider. And then the last is, is their demeanor consistent with what you would expect of a police officer? Most cops, most of the time, not all, unfortunately not all, but most try to maintain some level of professionalism. And you should look at it and be able to see, is this person that's at your door as you're looking through that little green camera on your phone, is their behavior consistent with what you would expect? And you should be able to answer those questions in all but 10 seconds. But if any one of those three seem off, my opinion is do not answer the door. But I already know most of you, if you have that feeling of uneasiness and you just think, 
something's off here. You're going to try and suppress that feeling. You're going to try and rationalize whatever those feelings are. The cop's uniform does not look right. He does not look professional. He doesn't look like what you'd expect from a police officer. You're going to think, well, uh, it's probably nothing. He's probably just a sloppy cop. Don't suppress the feeling. You need to know what's the worst that can happen if you don't answer the door. There are no consequences. It's not a crime not to answer the door. So if you feel uneasy or if any of those questions you can't answer, don't answer it. And what I would do is I would call dispatch and say, hey, there's somebody at my door who looks like a police officer. They're claiming to be a police officer. Is there cops at my door? Dispatch will then get on the computer and look up if there's any calls in your local area. If there's not, then they'll probably say, no, there's nobody there. And they'll send a cop out to investigate why there's somebody at your house. And then I would probably go back to my safe room, lock the door, monitor the camera, and then stay on the phone with dispatch. And if things escalate, let's say, for example, that cop then starts trying to make entry into your home, relay that information to dispatch, and then things start to become a higher priority. Dispatch would probably then broadcast over the radio, hey, is there any police officers at such and such house and trying to make entry? And assuming there's not, there's gonna be crickets on the other end of the radio. But guess what? Every single cop in the city is listening to that. Every single cop is listening to that and they're thinking, okay, this is a little bit bizarre. We don't come across this very often. So it's going to heighten the priority of that call. You'll probably have multiple police officers now coming to your house to respond. But there is one caveat to that. Sometimes outside agencies come within your city limits and start conducting warrant services and things like that. And what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to notify your local dispatch, be dispatched to your local police department of what they're doing, where they're going to be, what warrant they're going to be executing, what time they expect to be there and what time they expect to leave. Most of the time they're supposed to do that. It does not happen all of the time. Feds are terrible about that, but they're supposed to do that. And that way, if somebody's pounding on your door and it's not one of the local cops doing it, dispatch will know and say, oh yeah, that is the law enforcement department. So open the door for them. But if they don't, that doesn't necessarily mean it's not a cop at your door because a lot of times cops aren't perfect in their practices and they don't notify their local department they're gonna be there. But if they are doing that, it's usually in a capacity of wearing that black vest, those jeans and that badge. So it's just a whole bunch of things. There's no really 100% consistent positive answer I can give you. These are all just things for you to think about and things to consider when you're coming up with it. What I want you to do is trust your instincts, trust your instincts. What's the worst that can happen if you don't answer the door? What, the cop's gonna be pissed off, he misses lunch? Oh well, your safety's more important than that cop's lunch getting cold. And there's actually a great book on that by Gavin DeBecker, it's called The Gift of Fear. So you wanna dive more into kind of just trusting your instincts and, and how to utilize that to your advantage, I would read that book. But let's move on. No longer is this guy just gently knocking on your door, please let me in, please let me in. Now he's pounding on your door, he's demanding entry, let me into your home. Well, you need to understand there's a few different ways the cop has a legal authority make entry into your home. A warrant, exigent circumstances, and sometimes things like a fourth waiver, depending on which state you're in. But today we're talking about warrants. And now what warrants have is what's called a knock and notice, unless otherwise stated in the warrant itself, which we'll touch on a little bit. What a knock and notice is, is the police is supposed to notify you who they are, what their intent is, and demand entry. It should sound like this. X and X police department with a search warrant demanding entry. It should sound just like that, very consistent, very professional, like they've said it a thousand times before. It should not sound like uh, police, uh, open the door now, please open up inconsistent like they don't know what they're talking about. Doesn't necessarily mean that's not the cops, but just one more thing to think about. It should sound very consistent, professional, who they are, what their intent is, and demanding entry into your home. And they're designed to allow you a reasonable amount of time to get from the opposite end of your house to the front door, a reasonable amount of time to get there. Well, what is reasonable? Well, that depends on the size of your house. If you live in a 5,000 square foot home, it's gonna take you a lot more time to get from the back of the house all the way to the front door versus a studio apartment. So the cops are supposed to understand that and allow you adequate time depending on what size your home is before they actually force entry into your home. And then no knock warrants. First of all, they have to get those explicit, explicitly signed by a judge and they have to provide a reason behind it. And usually the reasons are for destruction of evidence. The cops are concerned that you're gonna destroy evidence if they notify you of their presence or if it endangers the safety of the cops. But I typically don't like no knock uh, warrants because I actually think it heightens the danger to the police officers and it heightens the danger to the occupants of the house. And you don't really see SWAT teams do it anymore because most of the time they're doing what's called a surrounding call out. A surrounding call out, they surround your house, they don't make entry, they call out to you to exit the home and they'll only enter once they believe everybody is outside of the home. B cops typically don't do it, maybe they'll force entry during things like exigent circumstances. And usually what you'll see with those no knock warrants are for teams like dope teams. And they're doing it because they don't want you to flush the dope down the toilet because that's the whole reason that they're there. But no knock warrants are very controversial. But one thing you always hear me say, and you will always hear me say is 
slow things down if you have the time to slow things down. The last thing you wanna do is misread the situation and make a poor decision. You don't want to think it's a cop when it's actually a criminal, let them in and now your life is in danger. And you don't want to think it's a criminal when it's actually a cop because you're gonna be placing the cop's life in danger and your life in danger. So these decisions are very important. And unfortunately, there's nothing I can say to you that is a guarantee. I can't say if you see this or if you hear this, it's not a cop. I can't say that because there's the human element to everything. Cops make mistakes, people make mistakes, everybody operates, operates a little bit differently. So you really have to exercise good judgment when you're thinking about these things. If something seems off, I probably wouldn't answer the door. I'd call dispatch. Just call dispatch and see what they have to say about it. Uh, I also want you to understand I'm not an attorney. I don't know everything. There's a ton of stuff I don't know. So question everything I say. This is not legal advice. I'm just trying to give you some tips on things to consider when you're actually in this situation. But you should understand that 99% of the time when a cop is at your door, somebody dressed like a cop, 99% of the time it actually is a cop. So don't go thinking and always assuming it's not gonna be a, a cop because you have to understand Cops respond to thousands of calls nationwide. I, I responded on a daily basis to tons of calls. And a lot of times I was knocking on random doors in the neighborhood. Houses that had nothing to do with the call I was dealing with at the time, but I was knocking on the door to see if they had information that I could use, if they had cameras, if they heard anything, if they saw anything. So a lot of times you do get cops knocking on your door when they're just trying to seek information from you. Guys, thank you for tuning in as always. I really do appreciate your support. Don't forget to hit the like, comment, subscribe button, all that good stuff. Let me know in the comments below. I had planned the follow-up one for this is if they are booted in your door, what are you gonna do in that situation? I'll probably make that video, but if you have more suggestions, I always wanna hear those suge suggestions because I got this video from the comments below and I'm still looking for more comments. So leave comments down below if you want me to keep making these and what you want me to make. Thank you, I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy.